here with Mark Sanderson. Is that correct? Make sure I got it. Correct. Yes. Okay. And are you currently at Standing Rock? No, I'm at Bismarck. I left the other night after the blizzard okay. came in. Okay. And were you there doing the ceremony that uh, everyone saw with the veterans, or did, were you already on the way out? <laughs> are you talking about the one in the uh, casino? Mm-hmm. No, I wasn't at that ceremony. I didn't take part in any of this stuff like that. I had a more of a low visibility role. Okay, okay. And how long were you down there? Uh, I got on a camp on the 28th of November. Mm -hmm. I left a couple days ago. Okay. And were you by yourself or were you with an organization? Or? I had a team with me of about five guys. Mm -hmm. Uh we hung out. We were a bunch of veterans. We were there with the veterans, but mm -hmm. we we came with veterans for Standing Rock. We mm -hmm. formed our own organization while we were there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to be called VERT. Mm -hmm. and does that is that an acronym for something? Does it stand for anything? It's Veterans Response Team. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's going to be a whole new holistic approach to healing veterans through service using their service skills mm -hmm. uh in a way that actually serves the community in a positive way mm -hmm. as opposed to the ways they may have used them you know in a, in a deployments to iraq or afghanistan or other parts of the country world okay okay and what inspired the trip now what inspired you uh, personally mainly just you know the corporate greed across the country is just stepping all over lower income communities and rural communities, indigenous people everywhere, their lands are getting destroyed by corporate greed and corruption. Mm -hmm. So my organization's number one goal is to identify those when that happens as it is a disaster, you know. Mm -hmm. If there's an oil spill, it's not an accident. Right. It's a nat it's a man made corporate greed caused disaster. So our, my my organization's main goal right now we want to get a hundred thousand dollars to go back to SETI in the fall in the spring mm -hmm. to launch spring cleanup because that whole area is in a flood zone. What area? And if the waters do to? get high in the spring, the the area where the camp is, it's not going to flood, mm -hmm. but there is trash that could get washed to into the water supply. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that. From and you're, you're referring to the Standing Rock are. area. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we, okay. our our number one goal right now is to just help with cl the cleanup efforts, just general, you know, camp tidiness, what like spring cleanup, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Okay. But okay. our larger mission is uh, responding to any nas any any disaster called by caused by corporate greed or corruption, and bringing awareness to those things. And also providing services, you know, uh, donating goods to them, mm -hmm. helping with establish whatever that it is they may need. I have a background in uh, emergency response management, just a little bit of an educational background. Mm -hmm. So we can even co work at, on coordinating with FEMA and other law enforcement agencies for small communities that don't have emergency response directors in them. Okay. Now, how would you describe your ex experience down in Standing Rock, like the first couple of days? What, did oh, it meet man. your expectations? It was completely, it was, completely uh, it was so spiritual and healing. That's what everybody from, says. I mean, <laughs> from a veteran's perspective, that mm -hmm. uh, I don't even, it's hard to put it into words, brother. Okay. Like, it was purely spiritual. That place has a true healing power that helped mm -hmm. many veterans. Every veteran that I was there with mm -hmm. cried many tears. Many, I mean, we cried each with the, and embraced each other mm -hmm. because of the emotions we experienced there. Seeing the people being treated the way they were, getting treated the way we were ourselves mm -hmm. by this oppositional force with up-armored, you know, up-armored vehicles like you'd see in Iraq or Afghanistan. You know, these guys were operating with less rules of engagement than we would be allowed to operate with in Iraq or Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And it, just seeing a population of people so 
embattled pretty much. I mean, they got them locked in out there. There's one way to get into camp, mm -hmm. one way to get out of camp. If a bridge gets iced over or, you know, if there's something wrong with the road, then they can't get out. The Army Corps, all of DAPL, everybody mm -hmm. has them pretty much locked in that little area. <laughs> now, how many police would also, you say? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead, man. How many, like, how many, um, I would say police, but there are obviously uh, yeah, I mean, state troopers. Yeah, if you watch my videos, and, mm -hmm. if you watch my videos, every video we posted, pretty much we had spotting scopes and cameras, mm -hmm. and we were out there trying to count police, mm -hmm. uh, get a size of their forces. We mm -hmm. should have more photo albums coming up, mm -hmm. but I mean, tons, tons. I mean, we would count truckfuls of 20 at a time, National Guard. Hmm. Police, sh sheriffs, everybody. Um, hey, do you guys remember what, where that MRAP was from? Jones Valley. Jones, Jones Valley. Valley. So, like, we were trying to just identify what all <coughs> units were there. Mm -hmm. And the big, huge armored vehicle they had was supplied by Jones Valley. I haven't even had time to look up and see where that came from. But, you know, that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Does Jones Valley know that it's up armored vehicle? Is that Standing Rock being used to oppress people in America? Now, how would, how does this, you know, you're, you're getting in, it's, I, I don't want to say you're getting ready for combat, but you kind of have that, a similar mentality. No, man. It, it's, but It's nothing like that. It's mm -hmm. nothing like that. It would move away from that word. There's mm -hmm. nothing related to combat that we're doing. <sighs> I want to make it specifically clear that mm -hmm. we have n no intentions of anything like combat. Mm -hmm. All we were doing was using the skills we were given mm -hmm. to just observe and report to the American people. It's nothing different than what an investigative journalist would do. Mm -hmm. We just recorded it. Okay. Okay. I, I want to make that specifically clear mm -hmm. that there's nothing about combat that we were doing. Okay. And there was nothing, I don't think there was no kind of like story or media about the vets causing any violence or anything either. So. Yeah, we nobody okay. caused violence. Right, right. I mean, the minute the minute we cause violence, we lose all credibility, so. Mm -hmm. Now, was there any... <laughs> That's not us. I know they like um, law enforcement and stuff. Sometimes they like to provoke to try and, you know, play the victim. Was there any of that? <laughs> oh, of course. Okay. I mean, wow. they tried to say that we were throwing snowballs at them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, come on, throwing snowballs at them. That's ridiculous. Right. Right. Um, they're shooting people with rubber bullets. Nobody threw a sm snowball at them, but if they did, come on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. They're spraying people with water. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, they said that we were throwing snowballs and that we had said derogatory terms to some women Mm -hmm. And we didn't even know that there was were any women there. You know, they're covered head to toe in body armor. Mm -hmm. We can't identify male from female. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is we didn't use derogatory. You can watch the videos. Pretty much every encounter I was involved in mm -hmm. that we could, we live broadcasted. So mm -hmm. full transparency is our thing, man. Now, how did you stay warm during those days? And how, how low did the temperature drop? When you can hear my voice, you can tell it was pretty hard to stay too warm. We froze our, mm -hmm. we froze out there. It was pretty cold. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's hard to get supplies in there, gas to run the generators, wood for heat, all of it. It's hard to get that stuff in there because when we came in, I know the governor supposedly stopped recently, but before we came in and when we first started coming in, they were stopping shipments of goods from coming on to the camp. We had one report of 300 cots that were in transit to the camp, and they got turned away by the National Guard. Mm -hmm. It's wow. unconfirmed, but it is a report. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you guys plan on going back there, or um, you're going to take if a I get, break? If I, get enough, mm -hmm. if I get enough funding, that's why we launched our GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. Vert, it, our number one mission right now Mm -hmm. Is to identify is to get a, like a hundred thousand dollars and take it back there to mm -hmm. do spring cleanup. Okay. 
and whatever else they may need. And then we're going to keep going as an organization, though. The next $100,000 we get, we'd like to go to Flint and right. uh, okay. Okay. order a whole bunch of, uh, or buy, get them a whole bunch of specialized water filters or something to help them be able to have safe drinking water. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And what did you, did you talk to any of the um, elders, the tribe elders any, or anything? Did they tell you anything? Yeah, I mean, I was okay. very close with a couple of the, uh, the senior Akichitas, mm-hmm. which is the, the, the protectors of the land and the people. Mm-hmm. Okay. And did they express, I'm sure they expressed gratitude and, you know, what, what the, I'm sure they it were like, more than that. I mean, mm-hmm. we're, they're, we're friends. Okay. They're my brothers, you know, mm-hmm. there was, I, I was with them side by side pretty much every day. Okay. Okay. It wasn't a. It wasn't like veterans over here and the right. First Nations are over there. That me and Oglala, Sue and my team, we were side by side. We were, you know, pretty much embedded with them, working with them every day, just helping them out with whatever, whether it be, for instance, they had a van that they drove around for security. Mm-hmm. Well, we got them a little flash and strobe light to put on their van so they could be visible. We got them some road guard vests to work the front gates so they wouldn't have to worry about getting run over. Okay. Uh, we even went in our own pocket and ordered a bunch of lumber and stuff like that to build a hardened building for them. Okay. Okay. Wow. So what would you take away and from this? I left. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What would you take away from this experience? And like, how would you encourage other people? <laughs> <laughs> so you you, you are you other. coughing because you you got sick down there? Yeah, oh, I okay. I got super sick down there. Okay. Um, my whole team got sick. My okay. photojournalist was throwing up all morning. Uh, mm-hmm. just you know the conditions. Mm-hmm. It was cold, and they don't let a lot of stuff come through. So, but anyway, now, now where, where um, do the police? I'm sorry to catch you off. Where do the police sleep? Like, how does that? I know they rotate shifts, I'm assuming, but... If you watch the video... I mean, mm-hmm. the best thing I can tell you is watch the videos, man. We broke okay. it all down. There's one video we posted, and we show you where they they have a whole bunch of tents set up, and they just have... It's set up like they have their own fo- little forward operating base, like you'd see in country, mm-hmm. with tea bears around it and a whole bunch of tents, with, mm-hmm. and that's where they sleep. Mm. Okay. So what what would you say you took away from this um, experience? I took away I I'd say I want to say I took away hope for the future because mm-hmm. when I came here there wasn't a lot of hope for me. I'd been sitting on the couch for the past two years watching this election cycle, mm-hmm. and it just it made me it made me angrier and angrier and angrier. Seeing that just the corporate greed and the corruption, mm-hmm. specifically the actions Donald J. Trump takes to just go after the little man, mm-hmm. marginalize the less influential, less less economically challenged communities. Mm-hmm. I guess that's a good way to say it. But, you know, I went there and I saw what happens when people come together and... Right now, the easement on horizontal drilling is not granted, which means it should be stopping, although I have continued reports from people on the ground that they're still drilling. Really? I'm guessing they're still... I okay. guess I can't confirm. Okay. I'm guessing it's still vertical drilling, but everybody I talked to, I talked to the head of the Kichita today, and he told me himself that they were still drilling. Like, and... I want them to know that we're going to always remain vigilant. And I can't speak for anybody else, but Vert will be back as -hmm. soon as we have operational funds to go back. The only reason I'm going home right now, and it hurts my heart to leave, but the only reason I'm going home is because we don't have the money to continue operations. I spent over $5,000 on my personal credit card. Wow. And I, I, I don't have any more room to f- to function without funding. So please, man, 
if you're moved by our statements, if you're moved by what we want to do, I highly, I highly encourage and share 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 your uh, encourage Hello? your followers too as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah, give uh, out your information. My Facebook in is you know Mark Sanderson twenty three is my YouTube. Our group is. You're gonna have to say it again. Bert, it was breaking -E up. Okay. My per, my page is you can find me at Mark Sanderson twenty three. That's my page. Uh, everything we post on there is a cross reference. Our organization is Vert Healing Through Service. It's V E R T dash Healing Through Service. Our website's about to be launched tonight sometime. Uh, it should be launched in any minute, actually. Um, our GoFundMe is up and operating, so we're we're doing this, man. We're all about going to places that have been stepped on by corporate greed and doing everything we can to help those communities recover and resist peacefully. Mm -hmm. Do you feel uh, when Trump goes into office officially, he'll let this continue to happen with the drilling and different things? I don't know, man. I mean, I really just don't know. Because they said a lot he of had reports. stock, and then they said he removed yeah. his stock. So yeah, there's a lot of reports that multiple banks and investors are pulling away from natural gas and oil pipeline mm -hmm. operations because I don't. I think they're starting to realize that they're not sustainable. Mm -hmm. See, the product, the the profit margin on these things are, if if the if they're in use for. Hold on, my wife's calling me. Can, okay. I, can you get wait one second? She'll yes. worry if I yeah, don't answer. Yeah. Oh no, it won't let me. It's fine. I'll call, I'd, I'd have to hang up on you. I'll call her back in a minute. She'll be okay. Yeah, we'll wrap up. We can. We can. No, wrap just up. hold on. No, okay. brother, it's fine. I have. This is what I'm here for, man. Mm -hmm. Literally. Um, <laughs> hold on. Where you're in Chicago? No, I'm, I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's the other thing, man. I mean, since we've been here, mm -hmm. uh, since we've been here, man, I know me personally, my life has been threatened and my wife's life has been threatened and the wife of our young child has been threatened. And since it's you've just been a standard rock? Yes. Yeah, I go. It's been out there. Not, I mean... I've received some pretty ugly messages and you know, mm -hmm. that's to be expected, Right. but it just, it's amazing how ugly greed and, and anger and everything else can mm -hmm. make people be. We're all about peace and just helping people survive, you know, helping them maintain their way of life. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to get rich by any means. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to help people survive and maintain their way of life. Wow. Okay, well, if you guys, hopefully you'll get the funding that you need, and um, we'll definitely have to reconnect when you get back out there and when you go Yeah, to man, stay in touch, bro, because we already have a gallery exhibit scheduled in Buffalo, New York. Okay. Our photojournalist took a whole bunch of pictures out there. Mm -hmm. We're going to go and have those photos on display. We're going to have a speaking engagement with the head of the Akichita security is supposed to be there as long as I can get him out of Standing Rock. Okay. Okay. Well, people have your information. Um, I'll get this up tonight. Yeah. It says poor connection. Yeah, I'm here, still there? Okay. The, the internet and uh, the internet here, okay. is, <laughs> the internet here is extremely frustrating. Let me tell you, I'll just leave it at that. But please, okay. yeah, just, uh, you know, if you could share okay. or let me know your story so I can read it and share it on my group's page. I'd really appreciate it, Sam. Yeah, I'll put the audio up. I'll put it up to you, too. Um, now, I'll get it up as soon okay. as possible. I'll, I'll be so watching your page. Do you have any last we'll words? <sighs> um. Let me think about that.
I, I just can't, man. I'm just exhausted. Mm -hmm. I know it's going so hard the past <laughs> week. I'm I'm tired. I'm, I'm all I can really think about right now is you know getting home to my baby girl tomorrow morning. But that's something else to be said. There's kids on these camps, man. There's really oh well, yeah, that makes sense. Three, yeah, they live there. Three hundred, yeah, three hundred and fifty children are on out there, and wow. they're suffering through everything else, just like the men and everyone else. Because so, go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, go ahead. Well, you, you've was, been there, just, so it, has the drilling actually, like, has they have they had to move uh, residency and different things, or is it? They've had a couple of camps pushed out. I mean, I don't okay. know if you're tracking what Camp Four is, but the the I mean, because they suppress all media that comes out of that place. Let That's me what I'm saying. You I mean, don't our, really. My hear. phone is okay. yeah. My phone is hacked. Like mm -hmm. I can't. It keeps messing up on me. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen other phones that are a lot worse than mine. Mm -hmm. They're running signal jamming technology, so you can't broadcast from the front line. Mm. Um. But yeah, to answer your question, this what I was saying. Camp Four, they had this other camp established, and the the National Guard and I don't know if the National Guard was involved, but at least the Morton County Sheriff's and other law enforcement pretty much went through arm in arm and just assaulted, launched a full on assault of the camp, drove everyone out of it, pulled mm -hmm. elders out of a sweat lodge, and if you know anything about the sweat lodge, that's wow. like highly spiritual. Yeah. yeah, it's like a detail. Watch, yeah. Okay. Wow, yeah, because on the news, they're running the, on the media. They just make it look like, well, it's an open field, and I mean, I'm sure it no, is, man. but you don't really see. They don't really show, like, okay, well, is it people living here? I mean, it's a camp, it's a reservation. Like, where's the, where's the housing? Where's the, you know what I mean? So they're living in, they're living like they're living in, you know, teepees and right. yurts, and there's a couple of hardened buildings and. They're, but to be clear, they mm -hmm. are doing. They're thriving out there. You know, they're living their way of life. Mm -hmm. They have plenty of solar energy, plenty of okay. blankets, things like that. So, mm 